Hi, this is Philip welcoming you to my tiny kitchen in my tiny apartment in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, where I'm going to share with you the ways that I succeed in making some very interesting food in the tiniest of, tiniest of kitchens. And here is my kitchen. We have the work surface, the sink, and my two ring gas cooker. Okay, so here we have the preparation for making some scrambled egg sandwiches for Valentine's Day. Here we have our egg with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Here we have our ground black pepper. We have our pre-prepared complete bulb of garlic ready for chopping. And now we're going to chop the garlic. There's our garlic roughly chopped. Now we've got maybe just a dessert spoonful of uh, sunflower oil in the saucepan. Add the garlic. Add a nice big pinch of black pepper. And we're ready to go. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Right, so here we have our bowl of dough fresh from the fridge. Uh, it's been in the fridge, I made this um, three days ago. And it's a mixture of some very coarse wholemeal flour, probably about 25%, and then um, it Italian pizza making white flour. I'm using that mixture at the moment for the simple reason that Buying wholemeal flour is not something that's just something like in Phnom Penh, is not something you just do. Uh, it, it's one of those things that the Cambodian supermarkets seem to think is an optional extra. So at the moment I can't get any decent wholemeal flour. And I have this stuff which is much more, have a, has a con consistency very much like oatmeal. And it's not much fun to use. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna grab around about I don't know, maybe a 12 ounce ball of dough here. Something like that. And we put that on one side and we'll pop that back into the fridge in a minute. And now we're just going to give our little ball of dough a quick knead. just to even out the bubbles formed by the fermentation. Now, here we have our little ball of dough. We're going to take the knife and we're going to use the back of the knife because we're working on a tile surface. Cut down through the dough and make it into four little triangles. each triangle and using our fingertips we're playing piano here not poking down with your fingertips like that the reason you do it like this rather than using a rolling pin is that using the rolling pin squashes everything to one side and that doesn't give you a nice balanced piece of dough it's especially important if you're actually making a round thing like a pizza where we want the thing to actually look round at the end of the day. So here we are, we are shaping this into a heart shape because yes, we're doing this for Valentine's Day. Then we'll pop that one straight into the frying pan. Do the same thing with our other three pieces. 
this stage we need to work quickly because although we have the g gas on a low light our pieces of dough will burn if they're left too long in one place We're just working that into a nice little heart shape off most of the flour we don't want flour on the dough ball when it goes into the pan the more flour there is on it the more it's going to burn and you get a, a taste and a texture that just isn't what I'm looking for when I make bread So there we are, there's our fourth one. Knock the flour off that. Retain our shape. Okay, so we're back with our scrambled egg. We've got the garlic and pepper in the pan with a, just a little bit of oil. Now we're going to just briefly whisk up the duck egg with our teaspoonful of Parmesan cheese. And now we're ready to move to the gas rings. Here we are. Here's our four little breads all nicely rising in the pan. We're just going to turn those over. The idea being to turn them before they get any darker than that one. The heart shape or in normal use the simple triangle shape makes the best use of the pan and um, We'll rotate these and move them around the pan. The hottest area of this pan, because of the way the wind is blowing through my kitchen, the hottest area of the pan is here. So we'll move things from here uh, as they become uh, more, more, more cooked and put the ones in this side of the cooler, the cooler side of the pan into the hot side to finish them off. Okay, so now... Let's light the other ring. our pan on and we're constantly keeping an eye on these breads because they're depending on how much wind there is blowing through my kitchen the temperature of the rings changes quite dramatically okay so that's sizzling away quite nicely Probably didn't put quite enough oil in that, but never mind, it's better to put less than too much or you end up with greasy scrambled egg. And I have to say that I don't enjoy that myself. By the way, I've got asbestos fingers. I move this bread around. Um, with abandon, as you can see. I don't recommend you do that unless you have lots of experience in doing so yourself. Okay, so there's our garlic, all nicely sauteed. We only want to make it change color just that, that's that amount. Just soften it ever so slightly and now we're going to put the eggs in, off the heat, so that they don't burn while we're scraping the little dish of eggs into the pan. Okay, so now we're just gonna stir that around. Okay. 
And there we are. Done. Turn that off. And we'll continue to finish off our bread. Our bread is coming along nicely now. It's these are more or less finished on one side. That one's in need perhaps a little bit more. That one's well and truly done and is we're looking good. Move those two around there, move those back into there. And give it a couple more minutes. We're almost done here. Okay, now we're done. Lovely. Right, here we are, ready to cut up our little breads and make some nice sandwiches. This bread is still hot from the oven and requires careful handling. There we are. There's our bread. So, there we are, there's our breakfast for two. All it needs now is a little garnish. So, here's our nicely presented breakfast. Now all you need is a couple of glasses of red grape juice, and you're ready to go and give your lady breakfast in bed on Valentine's Day. Bon appetit. <laughs>